All right, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, and welcome to the stream. It's been a few days. Good morning, Monster, how are you doing? Yes, I have been very busy at the house. I do apologize. Um, I'll have more of an update in a little bit. Let's see here. Let's uh, check and make sure audio's coming through, okie doke. Sounds like it. Yay, nothing broke. Yay, it's always good. All right, bring up the game. All right. Um, good news, bad news. So bad news is the, the part failure mod doesn't look like it's gonna get updated. Um, and I'm, I, I just, I wanna play Kerbal. So I still wanna have an element of um, challenge. So I think what we're gonna do here is, um, first of all, before we do any changes whatsoever, let's go over here. <clears throat> um, so we're still gonna call it Redux. We're just gonna change it up. So let's delete this one, this copy. And then we're gonna make another copy of this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Do, 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 do. Tell you about working with, you know, working with my hands. <laughs> um, been doing a lot of painting, a lot of, you know, uh, filling in holes, sanding. My hands are dry. All right, so we got a copy of that. Um, <clears throat> so if we launch Seacan, hey, good morning, Fluffy, how you doing? Let's launch Seacan and make sure the mods we're gonna, oh, also let's bring up the mod list, KSP, K, oh, KIS. All right, bring that up. All right, so there's a fix to, oh, well, field training facility is not lagging, uh, oh. Uh, um, um, something's missing. Oh, it looks like I've already, I've already made the changes. Hey, look at that. We don't have to go through that. Oh, oh, that, oh, wait, hang on. Whoa, okay, hang on. <laughs> All right, um, so let's delete this copy. I need that other copy back. I forgot I made this change already. So if we go back to our recycle bin here and, oh dear, uh, we want that one. So this one This one should have um What am I looking for? If if I lost I haven't lost the save, but I'm just making sure Oh holy but Jesus, what did I do wrong here? Um, wait a minute. <gasps> oh, wait a minute. I want the Redux. I'm looking in the wrong folder. <laughs> All right, hang on, here we go. Um, yeah, okay, this one has the O scrap. That's what we, we want to keep this just in case. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm confusing myself here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll get on track here. So um, this Redux, which is the live one, should have snacks. Uh, doesn't? I don't see snacks. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, wait. There it is. All right, found it. All right, so this one's got snacks, the, the Redux, which is our current save. So this copy, so I don't need that. Or that. 
I'm trying to save a little space on the hard drive here. So this should have the, oh scrap there, sweet, nice. All right, so we have a backup of everything, yay. <clears throat> um, so on our mod list here, we're gonna add snacks back in. So, uh, old stuff. For scrap yard. Well, okay, instead of just hunting for it, let's do this. Um, snacks alphabetically would go under science relay. So let's put a spot there, insert one row. All right. And um, then now we'll bring up C can. So hopefully this should work because O scrap and scrap yard don't offer any new parts, so there would be no new part. There would be no parts on any craft to get deleted from a save. That's the only that. That's why you have to really pay attention. Well, there's other things too, but mainly if you have a, a mod that you're pulling out of your save, and it has parts, and you've used those parts on craft, if you delete that mod and relaunch that save, you'll get a warning, and unfortunately that craft will be deleted, which is terrible. So we're gonna leave field training facility, which is, um, uh, I think it's a, we're gonna have to go check to see if we got the latest and greatest. Um, if we bring this up, we do have snacks installed, yay. Cool, neat. So what I wanna do here is go out to, <clears throat> excuse me, the forums. And we're gonna add this to our list. Snacks. Um, it does have parts. I have tested it before. So we're going to say goodbye to Scrapyard because uh, the mod author informed me he's going to do something. He's going to update the .NET and outside of that, if it doesn't fix it, then he'll have to turn to some, get some help. Unfortunately, I can't wait because he says it's down the list and I, I would like to play the game before case two comes out so the field training facility we're going to leave um in and i've i've put a line through scrapyard or no scrap and i've added snacks which we verified there now i just want to make sure that the field training facility mod we have the latest and greatest so if we go to the forum and he has a link to the curse forge that's where he puts his he says the latest is 1.2.2.0 so we are going to open this up here field training facility there it is and That's weird. Why is edge my deep should be? Anyways, um, 1.2.2.0, but let's just make sure. 1.2, okay, cool. Sweet. All right. So, so we do have the latest. A bit harder to check on stuff. Now there's been an update to the community fixes. Let's go read about what their updates are here real quick. Um. So 124.5. Vessel recovery funds properly account. Okay, so we're not really doing that. So Kerbal inventory persistence. All right, not doing that either. Robotics drift. Ah. All right, that's with the right groundbreaking DLC. Gotcha. Docking port rotation. Auto strut drift. Oh, interesting. All right, cool. So they're fixing some. Some drift issues here. Wow. Okay. It's good to have. So we're gonna update that. I don't completely understand every single one of the things because I haven't done a whole lot of construction in space lately. <clears throat> All right, so um, now So now instead of having part failures as a 
I don't want to say random issue. We do now do have to haul life support goods, snacks with our crew. Yes. It's really bright. <sighs> Come on, Kerbal. Nineteen more days. I was about to do the math myself. Thank you, authorized. Appreciate that. <clears throat> now they're based on the West Coast, and what usually happens. So hang on, let me take a look at the calendar. So the twenty fourth is a Friday. Is that right? Yeah, that's a Friday. And usually, what happens is either a game is released at either noon or two o'clock Eastern time. So. Yeah. I will make sure that, um, I hate to say this, I am going to shift my priorities around to make sure I can play Kerbal 2 early access on release day. Speaking of house, so we got all four doors installed. Um, me and Alex went over yesterday to rekey all the doors to one key, which is a fairly easy process with, with uh, nowadays. One of the last um, doorknobs, and it's weird because the doorknobs, you know, you, you've got your key side and then your manual lock side. And you know, it's got the, I'm gonna call it the tongue or the plunger. And you put that in, you put it in one side and the other side that screws in, they've kind of changed it now to where you, you twist the base so you can get the screws in and then you tighten them and then you twist the outside shell so you can actually cover up the screws for whatever reason. <clears throat> and evidently <laughs> when Alex and I were doing the rekey process and I, I was testing the lock, right when I put the reset key in or what they called the smart key, smart rekey key, the, um, the other side fell out. So we were in the middle of the rekeying process and unfortunately, we can't rekey that. It actually has no key assigned to it. No key we have works on it. So I have to call quick set tomorrow. Yeah. All right. This is our, oh, that was weird. Oh, hang on. I don't know why there's debris on my desk. All right. So if I call them and see if there's a way to reset it and rekey it. But it's really nice to have um, all of our exterior doors are metal doors. Um, and the door that used to go from what we call uh, the breezeway that goes from the house to the garage, it used to be an exterior door. We actually changed it to an interior door. Um, just try to save a little money um, and it works fine, except for um, there's a little bit of light underneath. So we don't have any, uh, uh, we don't have a threshold at the bottom of it. So that should work fine. I'm too old school. Haven't tried those locks yet. It, it's, it's not, it's a standard looking nickel lock, but just quick set changed how they did. I don't know why they did that. All right. So where do we stand? We should have, I think I got us fairly caught up to, right. So we have our, our network. We don't have one around the mun. Ooh, that should be fun. Um, okay. Where do we stand on science? Uh, we have 724 science. That's nice. Now I'm assuming that the save does include that we drove around with our science rover. We did. Okay. So we don't have to do that. I think what we're missing is our landings on the MUN. So let's go take a look real quick. Yeah, I don't see anything at all. So let's do a little experimentation. Let's go back to the editor here, the VAB. And we're, we're going to do a 
a manned orbit around the moon. So let's find, we should still have the craft here. Uh, sort by updated, that's right. Science orbiter. All right, let's grab this one. Let's take a look at this real quick. Oh, all right. So what do we have for engines? Okay, so we do have that. So we're going to update this. Now, am I concerned with stage recovery anymore? Do I need stage recovery? I don't. So we're going to remove that mod temporarily because stage recovery is great if you're doing uh, the scrap yard with O-Scrap or if you have a career. Now, this is a science career, so I don't have to worry about fun. So we're going to take out stage recovery because if we do a stage recovery, we don't we don't benefit from the funds. We don't benefit from recovering the part. So I probably should have uh, noticed that first. And I do apologize. Um, stage, and there's nothing wrong with the mod, just that we don't need it. So we're gonna remove that. And yes, please. I'm gonna go to our mod list here real quick and find stage recovery. We'll put a line through that. And in the notes, do I have a notes section? I have a status, all right. Um, don't need do to science. Save. Pausing the lag. And hang on a second. All right. All right. Launch the game again. So anyways, Monday, uh, the contractor's coming over. Have to do some minor adjustments to um, to the doors. He's got the uh, the back door is missing, missing the threshold. He didn't have the materials to fabricate one. But what made the back door such a real pain is it's surrounded by brick. One side is plumb, the other side wasn't. So he had to make some adjustments with shims and spacers and stuff like that and when you have brick you have absolutely no give whatsoever <laughs> um where all the other doors had brick on one side and wood on the other side so it had some something to work with and um we might i'm going to ping him tonight we might be removing the cabinets the old kitchen cabinets the we're going to keep the uppers but we're getting rid of the lowers and what we did discover is there might've been some previous issues with uh, water intrusion. So underneath the kitchen sink, there is a little bit of sub panel missing whatsoever. There's no sign of, of wood rot or anything. So there might've been, and they just, you know, got rid of all of it. And then how they covered it up, they just put slats in the bottom. And so when we we're taking a look, we noticed that uh, <laughs> we saw it at daylight, so interesting so when we remove when we remove the um we already know we have a small little <clears throat> issue with uh, uh about a, a year ago well almost two years ago we had all the plumbing replaced and it looks like maybe the plumbers didn't do something correct or there's a leak from the kitchen um and there's a little bit of a mold that's not very old <laughs> that rhymes all right and we have ways of getting rid of that all right. So now we don't need stage recovery, which means we can pull all the chutes out of the stages. So we'll save some weight. That's always a good thing. Uh, so the next couple of weeks are gonna be very busy because uh, if we pull out the old cabinets, we're gonna order new cabinets and those take about, I'm gonna say inside two weeks. So Alex and I have to go through the kitchen and the dining room um deal with any sort of uh well we always know, we know we have a small little sub panel issue just it's missing if there's any sort of wood it, or any intrusion or anything like that deal with it fix it cabinets need to be all the doors pulled off sanded filled after 10 years of owning a house the thing i dislike the most is a split kitchen sink uh 
Actually, Alex loves this. But yes, yes, there's pros and cons. All right, let's grab the craft we had before. So, and then we have to do that to the dining room. We've already moved all the furniture out of there, all the appliances except for the refrigerator. We're gonna cover that, do all the sanding, which is gonna take probably, I don't know, half a week. Um, filling in all the nail holes, all the tack holes. Um, and then once that's done, we, we mask everything off and we go rent a paint machine and paint everything. But we have to make sure we get as close as possible to the new cabinets. Pookie Kitty's fine. Yeah. He's had some breakfast and he's taking a nap again. So, all right, let's go in here and uh, we're going to update this craft. I think, oh, I was going to say, I don't think I want to use SRBs. All right, so first of all, we just need, let's look at this from... So we're gonna put two Kerbals in here. And this is our science package. Do we have any new science? We have all the science we need. We're not gonna transmit it. We're just gonna go get it and then bring it back. So when we're coming back through the atmosphere, whoops. Need our heat shield. That's good. And we don't need two shoots. We just need one shoot because we don't have to worry about. Well, there's some added weight in here too. So we're gonna we're gonna leave both those shoots there. All right. So we have our science junior. We're gonna take a scientist and a pilot. We have some battery. Just in case our pilot blacks out, we have an antenna so we can remotely communicate with it. That's good. All right. So now we want to look at this from a perspective that we are we're going to do an no we're just going to do a flyby we want to do an orbit so let's think about uh we're in orbit around Kerbin. So we need 985 to get a capture so it's plenty of delta v and then more left over to make an adjustment so this is this is a good stage. We have, so this is the, that's, so I'm looking for what, an 840? All right, so we're gonna replace these two tanks. That. Um, now I don't think there's any sort of, just have a shoot. I want to have a little bit of control with this because I don't think this pod has got a reaction wheel or am I incorrect? Can I have that please? Oh, it does have a little bit of a reaction wheel. All right. Well, we're going to do, we're going to do this. All right, cool. So this stage should be able to get us to the MUN or a flyby and make adjustments so we uh, can safely land home. All right, so now for the booster or the lifter actually. Alex is here. Hi, Alex.
All right, I'm back. I just want to say hi. All right, so um, this lifter is not going to cut it. Is this the biggest tanks we have? You are correct, Alex. It's not. Would you like to play Kerbal? No? All right. He's been in one of those moods where he wants affection, but he doesn't want affection. All right, so let's go in here and this is not the largest tank we can use. So I think, do we have the, I'm looking for, yeah. Oh, we do. All right, so what about if we just get rid of this? That doesn't work. All right, that works. That's weird. Let's get rid of all this. See ya. I want to be ya. Um, and then that would be this tank. All right. Anyway. All right. So we just need something to get us into orbit because we know that this stage We'll get us to the mun and back. So we just need a, enough fuel and umph. So let's go that, that off. Let's put two and see what two does. Try that again. Right, that doesn't work. All right, so we'll do four. All right, that works. A little bit too. All right, so we want to that. These guys should be cool. Right, so this makes that look better. Um. You know, he was a very quiet kitty that you got in this one too. Oh. All right, how does that? That's a lot of fuel. Let's see if we can take that one out. Oh wait, I was doing that wrong. A little close. Um, what I what I don't want to do is leave this up in orbit that I would possibly run into again. Uh, so we're going to um, I'm going to add some more stuff to it and see what goes on here. I'm looking for I'm looking for this <clears throat> and we want to put a probe core and we put battery dang it i'm hitting all the wrong keys all right there we go um an antenna Jeez. so when this thing gets us to orbit and we have a and we should have fuel left over according to this um and we, when we detach i don't want to leave it in space so we're going to turn it around and because 
because we have this and some battery. I gotta make sure the batteries don't die. We're gonna grab some solar panels. This. This way, if we do run, oh geez. If we do run shy of, of electrical, I have solar panels, I'll be able to trickle charge these batteries. Go ahead and put this in. Um, let's adjust that up there. This should work. Yep. All right. All right. Let's uh, call this reversion revision one. Buka. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's not what I want. So let's load up a pilot and a scientist. We've got Saturn, who is an experienced pilot, and uh, Race, who's working on being experienced. And we're going to put them on the launch pad. Make sure that's set. That looks good. Good, good, good. And let's check this. It's all good. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. All right, they're out of here. Um, all right, so what I just realized, we added a mod, right? They have snacks for 16 days. And that's because they're in the command pod, right? Yeah, okay. Should not take them longer than 16 days to get to the mud and back. So going forward, we have to remember to pack a few extra snacks. Gravity turn. Nos, good morning to you. How the heck are you doing? Long time no see. Well, so far we haven't had any adverse effects about swapping out some mods in the middle of a save. Good but slow day trying to get the day to last so I have to get up at 4 a.m. morning tomorrow. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, what are you doing? Fine. 
Yep, I think tomorrow. Um, yeah, I have to get up at early. Also. Uh, so we need 1278. We have 1766. So we have enough fuel for our orbit. All right, something I don't realize is we don't have... We don't have any solar panels, no battery on our orbiter. Man, I am a classic designer. Pet the kitty cat. Oh, all right. I know, top-notch KSP designer, thank you. Well, we're not going to be using the batteries. We do have an engine that if we use it, it does have an alternator so it can generate electrical. Here's our orbit. All right. Get rid of that stage. Go back to this stage. So, all right, so let's keep an eye on our electrical charge. And these guys are going to do an orbit around the MUN. I, I can't recall if we've done this already. I'm gonna do a low fly by and grab some science oh yeah 19 days we've done the countdown that's that's too low we can, we can do all right so if we do that uh all right so um thing about it is all right, so that's going to take us one day. We have snacks for 16 days. However, that's two days away. That's seven days away. Um, so if we do that low orbit and then we escape, we end up over here. Um, one day, eight days, nine days. So we're going to come out here, bring this in. I think 16, 16 days might be enough. Try it out. Let me do that. We don't have to go that low. So if we go a little bit higher, how does that adjust? How does that make things? Oh, okay. Still two days. That's six days. All right. I got better. All right. Let's do that.
Alright, here we go. So that's a little bit there. That's what we want. We want to get under the 30. So that way the science. All right. So here is five hours. <sighs> Girl, we don't kill Kerbals. That would not be cool. Well, what happens if a Kerbal <laughs> starves, they become a tourist. And then I can't use them. All right. Uh, all right. Closer. We're doing this because I can't remember if we've done a science flyby or not. <clears throat> it looks like we have. All right, we have. So we haven't picked up any science. This is going to... All right, so let's bring up snacks. We've got 15 days. Is there anything I can do? No, we're just going to get out here. And then what we're gonna do is at the Apoapsy, we're going to bring periapsius in. So in four days, we're gonna make that burn. We have 14 days of food or snacks. Okay. Electrical, snacks are going down. So from here to the PE, it is three days. So we have pl plenty of food. That was scary. I'm still tracking the mun there. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> All right. retrograde and what I'd like to do is with what fuel we have is see if there's any way I can help bring the AP in so if we do that 
puts our PE in the planet. So let's try to bring that out. All right, so we're gonna, let's do that. Uh, the, actually, this is not the Kerbal music. This is the space ambient music that I've been using for the last six years. <laughs> there is some Kerbal music when you get above 70 kilometers, but, uh, you know, there, there was always this big scare, I would say, a couple years ago. When people were getting hit with DMCA strikes, and it just wasn't clear, you know, who owned what music. So just to save my, you know... My gray hair too late. Uh, I generally turn game music down to 5% uh, and I just try to talk over it. All right, so how are we doing here? PE e, uh, could be a little lower. We still have 563 Delta V. Get a little closer. What I'm trying to do is prevent of going in so many laps I don't have to burn through uh, snacks and whatnot. Oh, all right. We are in the atmosphere. So let's do this. Go about there. And then we're going to say goodbye to that. We'll go ahead and deploy the shoots so I don't forget them. So, bringing in the apoapsy. We are one minute from the periapsy. There we are. We be landing somewhere. Oh, it's not in the mountains, is it? Oh, I don't want to land in the mountains. Hey, <laughs> the desert. <sighs> All right, Fluffy, we'll add you to the crew. So without packing any extra snacks, we're able to get to the moon <clears throat> and back, do a little flyby. But uh, for those that are curious out in, uh, out in the Gamer Circle Discord, I have a little do-it-yourself channel. I have been posting pictures of the door replacements. It, it's just doors, but I tell you what, when you have this door that's been in place for 50 plus years and you put a brand new door, it just changes. <laughs> uh, we're gonna land in the mountains. This is not good. Ah, uh, yeah. Something I didn't take into account Yeah, the, the reason why I didn't like it is the, the door, uh, the doors, all the exterior doors were the same. 
They're wooden doors, solid wooden doors, but half of it was window. So, you know, you'd have to have a shade in front of it. I need to check that out. Keep meaning to stop in there and see what's up. Oh, well, hey, Race, how you doing? Shiny things. Yeah. Oh, oh, we got some science. All right, so let's go ahead and um, deploy that. There we go. Um, good sh Oh, okay. Like I said, Monday, um, some minor tweaks. Uh, the, the weather stripping on... Whoa. Oh, we're getting some science. That's nice. The weather stripping is so new. It's, um, how do you say, rigid? So you have to really, you have to give a little bit of a heave to get that deadbolt. Uh, so we're, I'm, I'm gonna dremel out just a little bit. Oh, I hear you, Race. I do hear you, yeah. Alex and I made a top five list and then within, the, within each bullet point we have sub bullet points and stuff like that oh wait a minute are you guys set for you are okay yeah, good dudes dudes oh okay that was close i was getting scared all right um We're looking, I was looking at March to move in. Uh, Alex is projecting summer. <laughs> um, the big things that we don't have the skill set for obviously is installing cabinets. I mean, we can paint stuff like that, uh, but we have three hardwood floors, two of which had carpet. So we have some staples to pull up, but that's, at the bottom of the list, the other hardwood floor didn't have staples. It was a, a hardwood floor. We just need to go through and get a, maybe a buffing. I don't know. All right, so we're gonna land on the side of this. What is the slope for the surface? Uh, 27 degree angle. Okay. Hopefully the, uh... <gasps> what is that? Purple plant? I didn't know there's purple plants. I just said purple plant. Let's hope the reaction wheel can hold us. Otherwise, we, we may tumble and spin and twist. Uh, we're gonna turn that. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Turn that off right now. Coming in slow. Easy. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, okay, stay. Okay, a little rolling action there. That's fine, just a, no, 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 don't roll down the hill. Oh dear, oh dear, we're in trouble. Yeah, um. Trying to slow us down. Trying to slow us down. A little more. Woo. No, I, there's no RCS on, on that craft. Ugh. We use the, uh, the onboard reaction wheel centrifugal force to, uh, you know, slow us down. It worked. Oh, look at that. They brought back 48 signs. Nice guys. Good job. Congratulations, Race. You advanced to level one. Rocky, you're still working on your experience. Nice. All right. So, um, in theory, the same craft, if we do a flyby, should be able to get us to min miss and back. Let's see if there's any, any new science we can unlock. Or, ooh. You did not burn to a crisp. No, I do like, I do like the bigger engines. I do like that. Um, let's see, so what do we got to do to unlock new science? 
Ooh, look at that. We got new science right there. Can't unlock it. Why? Why can't I? Oh, I have to unlock that. Oh, that gives us a bigger battery. Then we can unlock and get more science. Ooh, I like that because this is good space science and that's for landing later. That's 300. All right, 300 for new science. And we're gonna hang on to this 300 and know that we can get a bigger engine. So <clears throat> we're gonna use the same rocket to do a flyby on Minmus. It's further away. So we have to make sure we uh, load up some snacks this time. Um, and um, we have a new science doodad. That's only for landing, so we're not going to. I find a place for this. All right, new science. <clears throat> um, so this craft is going to go there and back. So let's go down to Argo. Utility. Payload. There it is. Snacks. So if we do two of these just to keep the symmetry. And we checked snacks. Oh, sorry. We have to put some crew in it so we know how many people are gonna consume the snacks. We need a pilot, so we'll take DJ. We need a scientist. Okay, I guess I'll volunteer. And now let's check on snack. I says 66 days, that is more than enough. See, I keep forgetting this command pod is the only command pod that doesn't have RCS. I keep thinking it doesn't have a reaction wheel and does have RCS, so yeah. All right, so this is going to be the uh, Minmus Science Orbiter. And guys, I'm gonna take a, a quick little break and go use the restroom. So I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. I'll be honest with you, my, my sleep schedule is askewed. <laughs> I've been um, concerned, not worried, but concerned about certain elements of the house. So I've been sleeping till like two or three, getting up, going over to the house, doing what I can until the contractor shows up. So on, <laughs> on Friday, Friday, um, I went to bed at seven o'clock in the evening. And I slept all the way till about 6 a.m. I got me a good, good chunk of sleep. Whew. All right, so we have a crew, right? Do have a crew. Yeah. I mean, I'm usually good for five to six and a half hours sleep, you know, and as I get older, there's many trips to the restroom. <laughs> so I'm, I'm all good with that. Um, like I said, there's a, there's a lot of coordination and scheduling and stuff like that. So um, trying to trying to work it out on paper and hopefully it works out, you know, in real life. All right, so we're going to Minmus. We're going to do the same thing. Um, once we get above forty, we need to pop this thing so we can start collecting that science. All right. Ooh, nighttime mission. All right, cool. All right, let's get these guys. Same orbit. Yes. I mean, think about it. Once the um, once our big project is done, which is the the kitchen, um, then it's 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 I don't want to say small potatoes. It's a matter of just every single room we're going through and pulling out nails and tacks and staples, filling it in with uh, some um, joint compound, and uh, there's a lot of settling cracks that require joint compound and stuff like that so it's a matter of just filling those in letting it dry sanding it down making sure it's nice and smooth and painting um because once the kitchen and dining room is done then we have what we call the change room the craft room the tv room and then what we call the middle bedroom middle bedroom is going to have some framing done because we're going to add another bathroom so that's five rooms so painting really isn't that hard it's just doing all the prep work and getting it all ready and stuff like that and uh since the since the ceilings in every single one of these rooms except for one is that tongue and groove tile it's been in there for again 50 plus years and it's dingy it's yellowed um so what we have discovered is that by using So we want to wait for it. Look that. By using, instead of using rollers and paint brushes, which takes less prep, uh, using a rental spray machine, uh, what, what do you call it? A high velocity airless, something like that, does take a lot less time and does a more even job. Uh, okay, we're good on the fuel, good. Ah, uh, new science, new science. Yes. Not that one, no. Cool. Um, it allows us to uh, paint the ceilings uh, versus being concerned with, if there's a tile that's aged a little bit more than another, it could, if you go to run a roller over it, it could lift the material. And that's what we're trying to prevent. But once you get a layer of paint on there, you can paint over it again by putting another coat. And uh, we've done that in the hallway and it, it does, it, it, the paint helps. That's what I'm trying to say. So once you get all the painting done, then you got a little bit of touch up, then it's it's floors and time to move in. We're gonna have 
two rooms with carpet, one more room with a, a laminate floor. Unfortunately, the laminate we had left over, they don't make anymore, so we have to pick a whole new laminate. Oh, I don't want that. Huh, that was weird. Alright, once again, back to... Yeah. I mean, and, and then there's, um... The rooms of saving the floor are, are done. So, covering... Well, I'm sorry, the, the bathroom and dining room, the floor we want to save. It, it's a, a very good tile. It still looks really good. We just have to get a nice mop and glow on it, whatever it takes. Uh, so we want to turn this off. And this. Hang on, guys. Be right there. I've got to, to re, re sheet rock the living room here. It's currently half 70s sheet rock and half 70s paneling. That could be a small task, sir. Well, we have the majority of the house is tongue and groove. Since we did a remodel on the bathroom, we took out the tongue and groove title tiles. Uh, hang on. Um, and we used that in areas where the electricians had accidentally poked through yeah um so we did some patchwork on that which looks okay and once we paint it it's gonna look fine hang on a sec i'm gonna deorbit this thing all right that's good enough all right here's the guy oh geez all right Ah. Uh. You know what? We're going to have to deorbit these guys. There's no way we can get to Minimus and back without any solar panels. So, at least we know the craft can get us into orbit. Um, yeah, that was my mistake. So... Completely forgot that we didn't have solar panels. Alright, let's just do that. So, and then the, the very last, so the, the house that we're moving in is a, is a house that she actually grew up in. Uh, it's for her grand folks, her grandparents, and it's still got a very solid foundation. Um, when we were um, pulling out, when working on the first door, there was two sections that were wood that had termite damage, but it was old termite damage because there's there's the drill marks all around the house where they did a, a termite um, treatment. So, plus on Tuesday we have a Terminex coming out to do a free look through. All right, how are we doing here? Okay, get all the way over here. So we packed enough snacks. We just didn't. Uh, We didn't pack enough uh, energy, so um, so good test run on on getting into space. They did a good job. And we've set aside in our budget for uh, new air conditioning heating duct work. We got a quote on that. Because it's the very old, rigid stuff. We want to get more updated, flexible stuff. And, you know, there's there's a whole bunch of different laundry list things that um, underneath the, un, in the crawl space, um, Jennifer's father and brother years ago put down very, very thick plastic. So that way, you know, it stayed dry. And we want to replace that. We just want to pull out the old stuff, put in some newer stuff. So a lot of little projects to do. What is that? Oh, 
Okay. I would say probably two months ago, I was very proud of how neat the garage was. And now it's just, it's a, it's a big mess. I uh, mean, because the contractor's got his tools there, so he doesn't have to keep packing them up and unpacking them. Hey, science. Nice. And he's going to be there for a couple weeks. Yeah, so doors, cabinets, um, framing of, uh, he's not going to do the actual plumbing or bathroom installation. We have to get plumbers to do that. He'll frame it up. Then it needs electrical. Um, and then, uh, laminate floor and attic access. The current attic, attic access is not what we Need to clear this mountain range here. Oh, they're just hills. All right, they're fine. Itchy eyeball. I know, Puka. Where'd your mom go? I know, I know. She was here a second ago. So we'll turn around and we'll add um, some solar panels. Then we'll head to Minmus with another crew. <clears throat> you know, it's, it's this time of this weather or this season, this, this season, um, like I said, Friday, I, I left here at like 4 a.m. He wasn't going to be over until 9, but I had some stuff I wanted to get done because he he replaced a door that we asked him to replace, but we had already painted the framework around it. Did I hear you right? You're going to try KSP2 door? I sure am. Yep. And that comes out in 19 days. Yes, I will. Um... So I had to be, you know, resealed with, with, with caulk and, um, you know, he put some, some brad nails. So I covered up the holes with, you know, stuff sanded and stuff like that. So I spent a couple hours getting that all touched up and done in. And, uh, 
I had to the the room he was going to work in. There was a a door that not not that he was going to be working on. The frame around it, the paint just kept chipping off. So the more scraping I did, so I just decided to sand it all the way down to the wood. And of course, everyone sees the wood and says, "Oh, it's heart pine. It's beautiful." I'm going, oh, "Yes, it's beautiful." Please tell me we're going to paint over it <laughs> because. If we're not, that means I have to pull it off, sand it all down, put it back on. So anyways. That took about another 45 minutes to an hour. And then I discovered, for some reason, my big battery for my DeWalt, all my DeWalt tools, uh, got some sawdust or something in the release mechanism. It doesn't release very well. End up having to beat on it with the palm of my hand, and i got a bruise now. And... Whoa, that's a lot of science. I'm digging that. There's a crew report we can get, it looks like. Cool. I did not expect to grab all that science. All right. Okay, come here. Kiki. Come here. Hey. Dude, yeah. Here you come. Wow. Here. Wrong. Oh. You're spooky. All right. All right. He doesn't like the lights. I know. Yeah, I know. You don't like the lights. I know. You okay? Hmm? Yeah? Okay. Not like the bright lights. Almost bought a house before this one that had a ton of gorgeous wood trim. Honestly, glad we didn't because just... Yeah, it just... It's interesting that when they remodeled the bathroom, the lumber, some of the lumber, you could tell was milled not, I don't want to say on the spot, but it didn't come from a lumber yard. It came from a lumber mill. <laughs> so, all right. That was totally wicked. Uh, oh, Christ. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Thank you so much for the eight months. Can I just call you Joe? I'm sorry. How do you pronounce that? Joe, Joe Kim? I'm terrible with names. Thank you so much for the eight months. Appreciate that very much. You like the Kerbals? I like the Kerbals too. Good enough? All right, yay. <laughs> Dr. Crunch, how you doing? All right, um, all right. So we need to go modify the Minmus orbiter. We have to add panels. And we can add that to this stage. And since this isn't, yeah, we're gonna put cheap panels because we're not landing so we can use these doing well thinking about ksp2 yes 19 days we've, we've done the math <laughs> uh that looks dumb put it down here All right, so now we got panels. And we're gonna call this one A. Added solar panels. All right, we need a new crew. Um. All right, we need a pilot. Oh wait, Fluffy. Would you like to be a pilot? Kerbals, create. Go here and manage rewards. I'm doing it wrong. I did it wrong. Review. Here we go. Screen go. That didn't work. Hang on a sec. There we go. 
Uh, all right, so, uh, hang on a sec here. Looks like I might've missed some requests here. Or maybe I did and I just forgot to check them off. Let me go check through here real quick. There you go. Get him back, get him safe. So I have a request here for monster. Monsters there. We have Chris Abbott. Oh, we got to add Chris Abbott. Okay. And then Ren, you're in here. There's Ren. All right. So let's get Monster <laughs> and Ren. Those have been completed. So we have Chris Abbott. Make sure Chris. All right. So we need to add. Um, let's make Chris a, him a pilot. All right, there we go. And then Fluffy, would you like to be a scientist? Sure. <laughs> Sorry. I just railroaded your uh, Kerbal career there. All right. Cool. All right. So now, <laughs> look at this. We have a pilot and a scientist all ready for Minmus. We have our solar panel. We know the food is good. Snacks. Pookie's very humbling now. He's at my feet going, I'm sorry. I didn't need, need to be cranky. <clears throat> All right. So I did something you guys would never think. So a, a couple months ago, I decided to buy a couple of MREs and they were like pasta ones, some of the good flavored ones. And they were actually pretty good. I had the chicken rigatoni and then I've got a, um, it was basically mac and cheese for, for Alex, and we followed the process. Man, I tell you, I was full. Eating those MREs, they're not designed to eat all in one. They're they're used, they're designed to spread out through the day because they have a snack and a beverage and everything. And it was really a cool process. I, I'm very impressed with the modern MRE. Then about a month after that, I tried um, a uh, kind of like a an inst a um what's it called a freeze-dried breakfast from uh and not from an mre but um from a company and it's mainly for people that go backpacking the most recent ones are actually i like i said i'm so impressed because when i was in the navy we didn't have mres we had what they called box lunches and they actually came in a box that looks like it comes from like you know mcdonald's or bojangles or something like that and uh it was always made well in advance and um it depends upon what happened where they were stored you know like when we're in general quarters they bring you a box lunch it has a piece of fruit an apple or an orange the sandwich is usually stale or soggy-ish you know so but uh i had this biscuits and gravies i'm gonna i'm gonna share it here with you guys in a second the commercial showed up code brown sorry dr crunch um I'm just talking about something I, I tried and, and uh, I don't mind repeat. Okay. What am I looking for? Uh, um, there it is. So, so it was back in July that I got the peak refuel biscuits and sausage gravy breakfast. It's a backpacking meal. Uh, so look that up on Amazon or whatever. It was actually pretty good. It was really yummy. Then um, I decided to try one of their other meals, which was beef stroganoff, which I'm a fan of. And again, um, so I had this for supper last night and I would have to say the only thing about it is I would add just a little bit more hot water because it was kind of thick and it was a little salty, but you know what? It was, when you're backpacking, that's gonna be fine. You know, when you're out there roughing it, not a problem. All right, so let's do this. We're out of here.
So I'm just trying these things out because eventually after we get moved, uh, Alex and I do want to either get a travel trailer or a Class C and do some RVing and, you know, surviving off of hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff like that, you know, going to get old. In boiling hot water, pour, pouring it in and, and mixing it up and letting it sit for 10 minutes, I can wait now. So the MREs, yummy. Uh, the peak performance stuff, not bad at all. And um, Alex's family for her entire life actually have always had a travel trailer that they would pull out to a, a beach that uh, her mother's gone to ever since she was a kid. And they absolutely have a blast there. The ones I've looked at years ago were quite costly though. Well, I don't know, these were fairly, uh, I just closed my web browser. Didn't mean to. All right, so when we get to a certain altitude, we want to pop this. So the beef stroganoff cost me 14 bucks. So, you know, what, what I'm impressed with is the high content of protein. They said 40, 41 grams of protein. I like that. And, you know, of, of course, it's not a gourmet meal. It's it's beef, you know, it's freeze dried. So right, let's go ahead and deploy that. Get our panel out. There, now we have some power generation. I'll get the other one out here in a sec. Reminds me I need to get a new box of MREs. Had tossed the previous ones when my shop lost power. Oh, bummer, bummer. Yeah, it was just kind of an experiment because like I said, I've, the old MREs, um, I remember those things and no one, um, my uncles who were um, corpsmen in the Navy and both of them did tours in uh, Vietnam, um, had some old home movies they shot in, in, in uh, eight millimeter. And uh, you know, you, there was one shot of them eating and they told me that the, it was always good if they could find local fruit or vegetables because the MREs were, you know, in a pinch. Okay, but you know, everything was in a can, you need a key. They said they didn't starve, but you know, Alex's brother who is a, currently in service um said yeah he he enjoys the current mres and usually there's a process to where usually you want to trade something from your mre for something else from another mre and if you can find someone that likes this versus this like maybe you don't like the cookie and you want the the uh, snack bar or something like the energy bar or something like that all right so get rid of that do that switch back to this same old routine RCS on, let's back this away. All right, let's um, turn it around. Out of the best of my knowledge, we haven't had any Kerbals do a flyby in Minmus, so hopefully we pick up a nice chunk of science here. Hopefully. All right, so let's get the other solar panel out. We had cans in the military. Uh, they were great, but the weight was too much to carry around if you're staying out for more than a few days. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, I can understand. All right, so we're we're sending this this crew. So snacks wise, we have 66 days of food. 
we're heading to Minmus. That's the Mun. Have the computer plot us a course. I'm going to alter that course. All right. Oh. Um, all right, I'm not going to worry about that inclination. Yeah, so uh, Alex's brother or Alex's brother explained that usually when they have a, a maneuver as well, they only take a couple MREs. They don't take like a week's worth because, you know, and I, I would have to admit, uh, eating a whole MRE in one sitting, I would be gorged. I was just so impressed with the heating, how it worked. It's a good science behind that too. going to come up way short. All right, let's keep that there. Move this over here. I'm doing I'm using doing RCS on this. Um All right, so hang on, let's take a look at the big picture here. Okay. Um, I usually keep a month box stashed away. Then when they get close to expiring, I take them on rallies and eat them. Oh, there you go. There you go. Your, um, your racing rallies. I got you. All right, I think we're good. Let's turn that off. Um, again, this is just a flyby. some science <laughs> um moving from california from west coast to east coast we east coast seem to have you know storms california got storms especially this year they've had that drought and then the weather the the what do they call it the cyclone bomb but uh, i've never experienced a power outage in length like we have here now Alex said it's generally not that bad, but the couple times that a hurricane didn't come through here, but the outskirts, they didn't have power for three days. So she has learned to keep canned foods and dry goods stored just in case, even when it's like really cold and maybe your plumbing's frozen or something like that. So that's kind of why I've been testing this stuff out too. Plus I'm very excited that once once the contractor is done, I can kind of put my garage back into my workshop, put my get my solar up and running, a little backup power. All right, so we're on our way to Minmus, right? Should be. So let's see if we get out here. And I'm I'm really I have a I, I purchased a, a GoPro which I haven't used yet to film anything. Uh, so hopefully I can film all this stuff and uh, share it with you guys. I am not an electrician. I am not an expert when it comes to this stuff. And um, I've watched plenty of videos of people building these little do-it-yourself. This is not to power the whole home. It's just a, a backup. 
but I want to do it right. All right, so how how is our approach here? Happy time zone. Hey, what you doing? Bashi, Bashimoto, Bashimoto, Shimato. All right, so let's get out to here. So that's going to be one day. How are we doing on snacks? Snacks are good. Ah, oh, science. Yes. We've got 61 days of science left. Yay. All right, so let's get a little closer. Again, just a flyby, picking up some science. Now let's take a look at our return here. So if we do this, we exit there and our PE is inside the atmosphere. So once, once we finish this, we're going to see if we can't make an adjustment and pop our periapsis. Ooh, actually how that is one day. Oh, okay. This might not be so bad. All right. So let's collect our science here. There we go. Getting all kinds of science. Science is important. Some people don't like the science grind. I don't mind it at all. It says we have an EVA. Is that true? No, oh, that was a duplicate. All right, that's fine. All right. All right, so if we make, we have 661 Delta V left. Now we do have to make some sort of a maneuver. And I'm wondering if it would be more cost effective to do it out here because if we just return back to Kerbin, yeah, we're gonna burn up in the atmosphere. So let's see if we can't, I don't mind coming in in an inclination at all, but I'd, I want to make sure that we, uh, there we go. That's a little too high. So out of curiosity, what would it cost to kind of straighten our oh, wrong way? Not much. I like it. So 40 Delta V to get us all from going kitty wonky to uh, science is everything. That's true. Especially when you're doing a science career. So we're going to spend 40 Delta V of our 661 to get us all, you know, in phase. Whoa, lined stuff. Petting the kitty cat. All right, how's that work now? So what we're gonna do here is see here, when we leave, we're gonna be right here and I'm not gonna use any fuel, we're gonna use we're going to use um, physics to bring the Apoa in and we may not may not do it. So I, I we have a little fuel left, so we might burn some to bring the Apoa in for I really don't want to do a bunch of laps, especially when I have life support. So this says we go there. So let's go. So if we go this, that's 18 days, really? 
one hour. Ooh, I must have made a mistake. All right, so I don't want to make this mistake. Let's go do that. So why am I so nervous about the amount of days and times? We, we, we have a little bit of a challenge. Previously, we were using a part failure mod, but it was causing lag in the editor. Uh, the mod author found lots of problems. He was saying, you know, if you use, you know, uh, this mod, I go, I'm not using that mod. Not, he was pointing fingers to mods that cause problems, which I wasn't using any of them. And I got the indication that he may not be able to fix it. It's not his mod. He just adopted it for support. So that is 10 days away. How many days of snacks we got? We have 60 days left. All right. So. Whoa. All right. So we're, we're coming in this way. My bad. I forgot. Oh, no, no, not the mod father. No, zero Kerbal. Very, very approachable, very nice. Um, unfortunately, he just, uh, I think um, how, how I interpret is that he's going to change one thing that he knows he can update. And if that doesn't fix the problem, then he'll have to seek help. And I go, well, you know, I've only got so many days until Kerbal 2. I don't want to keep putting my putting my Kerbal career off. Oh, yeah, I know Linux. He's uh he's in here almost all the time. Really good, really nice guy. Now again, the mod the mod person in charge of this mod, the mod author, he's not the original author. Zero Kerbal is the gent's name. He, um, he has, you know, his own personal, he uses a uh, curse forge for all of his mods. So trying to get him off a of sea can, um, and it's, you know, he's got his reasons and I respect that. All right. So we're, let's get all, how come we don't have, well, that's interesting. Oh, oh, that's because la, oh, right. Okay. This is a brand new uh, pilot. Chris doesn't have our SAS functionality here. Yeah, I, I'm, a sh I'm, I don't know anything about the developers, all right? It's a brand new team. There's squad as part of it. In fact, they brought in um, a mod author, uh, the guy in charge of Nirta, um, uh, you know, and so he's part of the team. And um, all right, so let's see what we got going on here. If I do a burn here. Okay, that's gonna cost 451. I mean, this is kind of kind of a different time, right? Because normally you'd get be able to go to a PAX, a game developers conference, some sort of convention to where you can get hands on and have Fizzo. Thank you so much for that follow. Appreciate it. Um, but because of pandemic and pushbacks, and uh oh, that's our solar panels. That's okay. They're they're broken. They they were the expendable ones. It's all good. Okay, let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. I do not want to kill my Kerbals. Here we go. Now what we're hoping for is that we drag. Okay. <gasps> Unfortunately, Okay, we have some snacks on board. Good. Ooh. Where, where are the snacks? Panicking. I got 12 days of snacks. Okay. 
there. Those are the cheap panels. We didn't. We're gonna kick off that stage anyways. So we've passed our periapsis. Oh no, we're coming. Oh, something else. Interesting. All right. Very excited, Fizz. Yep, very excited. I was just speaking to the development team. We we know former members of squad. And we're passing part of our other ship. <laughs> we know former members of squad, the original development team of KSP-1 is part of the new team. I don't know anything about this new team of developers. You know, if they go early access and people report problems, are we going to see a hot fix or do we have to wait for, you know, a certain release schedule? Trying to keep us on retro here. Oh, we are we are landing. Hey, Peter, how was the hype? Everyone is very excited. Um, I will not I will not lie to you. I was um. Oh, okay. Um, being that originally how KSP two started was a huge drama big you know so the originally the company was called star theory um and then i don't know what exactly happened but something happened behind the scenes that um someone else got the ip pulled it from the original star theory hired the same people via lincoln they reached out so yeah it was um take two in their business practices. Then of course, with the pandemic delay, delay, delay. And originally, you know, what I was saying is that, um, they said that they would be posting like updates on, on video and they weren't really doing that. They were showing animations of assets and stuff like that. And I'm going, okay, what does this mean? You know, you're just going to start showing us pretty pictures. Yeah, yeah. But uh, everyone knew it was going to be coming out this quarter because uh, Take Two listed their financials and showed that KSP2 was going to be released this physical year, this financial quarter. All right, so where exactly are we? Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and get the out right after your holidays yeah so <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see right Hey, what's up, my balls? Uh, that that looks like a mountain peak that we're headed for. Yikes. Um. All right, that's not so bad. We landed on a twenty-seven percent grade last time, and we survived just fine. Twenty percent slope grade. All right. Ready for KSP two? Only two weeks. Nineteen days. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Tell you what, though, I was having, I'm having a blast playing Subnautica. I really wanted to have the part failure mod installed because it was always a challenge to where everything's going fine. Two weeks. Yeah. 24th, right? It's 
on a Friday. Don't know what time. And was what I'm so impressed with, instead of having to log into their forums to rely on the forums, they actually opened up a Discord, an official herbal Discord. I was, I was so impressed with that. What is that white thing? Oh, there's a bunch of them. It says we can do an EVA report. Can we? Let's try it. Oh, it's a duplicate. How long do you think it's going to take for someone to visit every planet KSP2? <clears throat> You got the link for the official Discord. I will be more than happy to share it here. Let's make sure these guys land safely. Um, that is a good. That is a very good question because um, Evil Coffee. Thank you for that follow. Oh no 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 no. We don't want to die. Hey no. Okay, hang on. Um um. Everyone everyone remain calm. It's gonna be fine. Gonna be fine. Looks like we can get. Can I get an EVA report? I don't think I'm gonna risk it. All right. Um, because they said to do the interstellar stuff, you're gonna have to do some colonization. So, and their colonization. Um, let's do that. Make sure. Uh, free cooking and preparing for the weekend. Won't leave room for a Friday. Oh, dude. Hey, look at that. They brought back 800 science. Oh, nice. We got so many ribbons are going to fall over. Um, so let me go see if I can uh, go to my discord, go to the Kerbal 2. It's for intercept games. And, um, um, Tell me if that worked. So if we go out to Steam and I go to the store and I type in Kerbal, go to Kerbal 2. <clears throat> and now this is based upon the early stuff they said. They should, here's their roadmap. So in order to do Interstellar, you have to colonize because when you colonize, you start to learn about interstellar yet the interstellar is after colony so i don't think it's going to take a long long time because i think this is probably a year out so and you never know what's going to change between early access and release only one new star system we don't know All right, so that was good. Um, so we got some science here. What I'd like to do is put some communication around the MUN. We're gonna put some, uh, I think I have, so if I type in relay, there's the Kerbin relay. Take a look at this. Oh wait, what? Yeah, that's fine. What do we got going on here? Um, oh, those are good. I think this will work just fine. I have some parachutes. Where are the, okay, we're not doing stage recovery, so I'm going to pull the chutes out. Take a look at our uh, numbers here real quick. I mean, after all these years, is KSP-1 still visited most... Wait, I mean, after all these years, KSP-1, I still haven't visited most of the planet. I visited all of them. I think there's maybe in, in Jewel, I think there's two moons I didn't land on. But I did orbit them, so good enough, you know. And not with Kerbals. 
Uh, I plan to do a reset now. And now that I have a gravity assist calculator. Ooh, fancy. Now let me take a look at this. So this is going to be unmanned. And we have to deploy communication satellites around the moon. Um, I think we're going to give it a try. This is Kerbin. So when we take a look at this, we have these boosters give us about a minute, then we get rid of them. And then we're, we have to go to a high orbit and then get rid of this and then use this to finish. I think, I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be okay. Actually, no, we're going to the moon. They're going to be okay. Guys, I'm going to take a quick bio break. I'm going to go use the restroom. I will be right back.
All right, I'm back. I am back. All right, so we are going to see if we can deploy satellites in the MUN, around the MUN, not in the MUN. So we don't need any Kerbals for this, but each time we deploy, we have to do it on the Kerbin side of the MUN. So we have communication. All right, um, we don't need that. So a standard orbit. There we go. We have a de decent thrust to weight ratio. We're getting ready to say goodbye to the boosters here soon. Let's see what happens. All right, no problem with the thrust to weight ratio. Reading an article here. Oh, I thought they were going to do a live action Gundam. I guess not. All right, never mind. That was clickbait. Oh, they're doing a sequel for Pokemon Detective Pikachu. A lot of people aren't happy about that. Let's go ahead and pop this. fuel to get to uh, orbit and it looks like we could use this to also get us to uh, the Mun yep Sweet. <clears throat> now, if I see solar panels, we should have an antenna. Oh, geez. No. Go away. There's an antenna here, so we'll be able to remotely control that. So, if we're going to the MUN, let's plot us a intercept, and then alter it. Though so I think so we're going to still have about 
a little bit under a thousand delta V. So if we do a say 500 kilometer, I should have done that. All right, do that. Because we're going to be out far enough to where we should be able to communicate with this relay so we can get our orbit. Uh, we can't make any adjustments back here, but along here we can. So it shouldn't be that risky. And so it's going to take, um, so we're going to have what? 600 Delta V left. That's enough to get an orbit. And then we can deorbit this stage around the moon. Yay. I just read about hundreds of thousands of Texans without power because of all the the ice on the power line is terrible. Lining up for the burn. All the stages have got static panels, so we should be okay on electrical. Uh, it's a little shy. Let's see if we can um, <clears throat> make this adjustment with RCS again. Close enough. All right. Let's get out here. Now, again, we're doing this completely unmanned. We're high enough, we're not going to get... Oh, actually, it looks like we may not have communication where the PE is. All right, we're going to have to do this uh, a different way. Trying to make a burn here when we don't have communication is not going to work. So we're going to do it here. Just slightly adjust our orbit. So let's get our capture. There we go. And let's see here. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and do that burn. That'll get our capture. And then we'll do another adjustment to push the PE and bring the AP in. 
Because we say we still have plenty of Delta V to do this. Started rewatching Fringe. Oh, it's it's weird, great writing, and just bizarre. Some of the things that they're talking about. Got another episode of The Last of Us tonight. Never played the video game, so I don't know how true. Alex is saying just buy it. We have a PlayStation. Okay. All right, so what we need to do is I saw a blurb. Amazon is filming a. Oh yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. All right. So if we oops, do that, Yeah, I've seen some set pictures, but I don't want to be spoiled by it, but I've seen a red rocket. I've seen power armor. Real curious about that one. I've got Last of Us on my watch list. It's definitely something I think, you know, to consider to watch. It's, it's not like a Romero or a Zack Snyder zombie apocalypse. It's, um, Something a little different. <clears throat> so we're just using up the fuel in this stage. You gotta say an orbit. We have 373 Delta V left. Unless you have to be, wait, unless you have to be in a clockwise orbit around the moon, there is no reason to not use counterclockwise one. It requires less to, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I usually come in retrograde, uh, mainly because that's how the Apollo did it. So it is just how I do it. Um, so let's do this at the PE. Let's go ahead and what do I want to do? Oh, okay. It's weird. Why is it? So oh, oh, okay. Never mind. That's better. Uh, I'm reserved with Fallout. Depends upon how Amazon stays true to the source material. You know, did you go? Did you watch their uh, 
their uh, 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 Tolkien story, The Ring of God. I can't. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. That's going to cost 720 Delta V to do that. I don't want to do that. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to the PE here. And we're going to bring this into 500. Yeah, it was like a, a real, real, it's like when um, Galadriel was like very young and, uh, you know, it was like very well done, uh, I thought. So this is about the altitude that I want to do for our orbit of our... Uh, communication satellites and when we get out to here is what I'm going to do is kick off this stage and deorbit it so we don't have to lug that thing around then we'll get a better we'll get a better uh, orbit and then start setting up our communications all right let's go ahead and face um, retrograde get over here I have been grown from grass. I am here to watch and say hello. Well, hello, little potato. How are you doing? And I think technically potatoes are just from earth. There's no grass around them. I'm not a potato farmer, so. Uh, I need to learn this game for my first watch went backwards. Sorry So many mods I don't think so If you check my mod list, I think it, it's under 50 isn't it like 41. That's not a lot of mods Potato come from the underneath the ground all right Oh, wait. So according to this, yeah, I have 41 installed mods. Do you know that there's people that have upwards of like close to 200 mods installed? Now that's a lot of mods. <laughs> Little potato, thanks for the follow. All right, we're going to um, get rid of that stage. We're going to go to it. Yeah, I'm one of them. It takes two hours to get things to. <laughs> All right, let's turn off that. Oops, wrong one. That's what I want to do. So instead of lugging this tank around, that's. Why can I do this? Why can I communicate with this? Uh, well, one, we have a probe core. We have solar panels and batteries, and we have some RCS so we can uh, maneuver this thing around. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going to deorbit it so I don't run into it later. I have done that so many times. I don't want to do it again. I'm going the wrong way. My bad.
All right, that's going to deorbit nicely. Let's go back to this. All right, so first of all, we want to get a pretty good orbit here. So we're at 502 by 367. So let's push this out to 500. Let's go prograde. And we're going to use RCS to do this. So we're going to adjust this down to 10% on all of the RCSs. Hang on a sec. Let me get this all adjusted and I will do my diligence to answer chat. Oops. Ah, oh, geez, that's the wrong number. Uh, I hit an ad just as you were explaining how you used to, oh, um, well, it's got an antenna. I was on the Kerbin side of the MUN, so we have we already have a communication network satellite network around Kerbin. So since we detached it, have a probe core so you can remotely control it, and an antenna that's strong enough to communicate with these, we can remotely control it. Because I do have it set to where, if you check the mod list, I have screenshots of all my setup screens, and I do require a signal. So I know. All right. Um, all right. Did did we adjust all of them? I got. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we want to get. We want to push the PE out. A little bit. So. Um. It said RCS, but I think we're going to actually. If I do an atom maneuver at the AP, circularize. All right, let's do that. Oops. I fingered. So this stage has got 1800 Delta V for us to kind of plutz around with. What I'm trying to do is get a fairly decent circular orbit around the MUN as a starting point. Doesn't have to be exact because Kerbal doesn't really, I don't want to say it doesn't care for exact. What do we got here? 502.9, 502.9. It's good. Now, if we get over here, we're going to lose communication. Um, so let's do a save right here. So if we go to the AP and release our first satellite right before the AP, actually, let's try that. We go over here. You need cross orbit to cover, I think. Oh, uh, don't worry. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my old. Actually, you know what? I, this is gonna be kind of cool, actually. Um, so let's face prograde. See how much more responsive it is after we got rid of all that heavy baggage. <laughs> uh, I might, I may run into a drift issue here. So hang on a second. Let me try something here real quick. So where's my quick save? So hypothetically, if I do my resonant orbit, I'm going to do it at the AP. So if I release my first satellite right now, 502 by 502. All right, why not? Let's do another save. Um, so we're going to... That's our first satellite. And we're gonna go in here and rename it. Somehow, there it is. Oh, geez. 
That's not it. All right, I'll get it. I'll get it right. Rename. Uh, this is not the Kerbin relay. This is the Mun relay. A. And then we want to go to orbit, and I'm going to bring up Notepad here. And we want to put this right here. Now this actually is in the game. Four hours, one minute, 48 seconds, but we have some more details here. So that's why I like to use that one. So four hours, that's not 45 hours, four hours, one minute, 48 dot, dot, seven, two, one seconds. Cool. So now all we have to do is, um, so it's deployed. That's all we have to do. I'm going to put the solar panel out a little bit later. So we're going to switch back to our delivery vessel. I know I'm going to get some gap here before we do anything. Some gap, create that. That burn's going to happen all the way over there. So if we warp over there is what I'm looking for is some drift and not colliding. Oh, there wasn't much drift. <laughs> okay. So now we'll deploy panels. And we're gonna switch back to this, which I think, um, see here oh I hope it doesn't get in the way I do not want that to get back here because that will hit that Oh, it's going to do it. It's going to do it. Oh, no. All that time to set up the drift and it still like drops right in front of it. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Alex wave. Seriously? Wanna get a sledgehammer, start hitting things now? Me, problem. No, I don't think it's going to fix itself. Um, I think, um, let's do this. Now I, uh, I've, I got a little bit of experience. I think what I'm going to do here is let's do that. Give, give ourselves a little bit more leadway. As long as we get our other satellites to match its orbital period, that'll be fine. It's orbital period there, uh, Alex. All right. I think, that, I think that was a good thing to do there. What? No, not an orbital question mark or an exclamation point. Orbital, never mind. <sighs> Fine. All right. So once again, um, 
our first satellite, information hasn't changed, right? So if we can, if we switch back to it. It still has four hours, one minute, 48, seven, oh, seven, two, two. All right, change that. Now, and the orbit is still 502.9, 502.9. All right, so yeah, so it's gonna be working out fine. All right, so now, um, so what we'll do is go up to here. So there goes our first satellite. And then we want to face prograde. And then we're going to deploy our second satellite. There it goes. And then this time we will have to turn on the engine. How much electrical charge does this thing have? Hi, Alex. 600. All right. It'll be fine. Um, now we want to do a circularization at altitude. Now, altitude is going to be 502. That burn is going to happen on the Kerbin side. One sec, guys. And I'm back. All right, so that should work fine. So let's do this. All right, that. Hit 757, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. All right. Fast wings, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. All right, so this isn't done being deployed. Let's have that face prograde. That's fine. Um, we don't need the engine on anymore. Or the panels. Don't want cross it? What do you mean cross it? I'm unfamiliar with your terminology there, sir. I'm gonna change this down to zero five. That works. Um then we are going to four hours, one minute. We need 48 seconds. Forty-eight dot seven. Up oh, too much. Ooh. 
Ooh, perfect. All right, turn off RCS. If one goes on XS, oh, you mean like a traditional like GPS sort of thing? No, this is just a, they're gonna be in orbit and they'll have the same distance between each other. So if one is in a dark zone, there, it's going to communicate because the other ones will be in communication. So this is just a, a typical chirosyncrasy, you know, not geosyncrasy. All right, so there's A. Oh, we need to... Oh, jeez. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I, I made a mistake. Okay. We have to rename this one. Now, what is that? TDRS or something like that? The original GPS system? Ooh, little mud, big mud. This is B. Okay. Uh, here we go. All right, so now we just go and deploy our third one. So now, even if we go on this side of the MUN, which we should not have communication, I bet we're gonna be able to bounce a signal. See? So, and then even if that was over here, that would be able to relay to that to us to so on. All right, so anyways, uh, let's point prograde again. And, um, there we go. Switch back to this. Why can't I get to the engine part? Uh, oh, sorry. Wrong one. Wrong one. All right, circularize at the altitude of 502 again. Let's get over here. Uh-oh. There we go. Better. So the, the height of the altitude in Kerbal isn't super important. What is important is that their distance between each other be consistent or as spot on as possible. So again, we're off by about 28 seconds. So what we're gonna do is down to the RCO, oh, we'll deploy the panels. So don't forget about that. We don't need the engine anymore. And we can rename him or it. Need that to reduce this to that. All right. I used to play with a GPS mod. I don't think I've ever heard of a GPS mod. You do the. I, I know that uh, EJ. Um, the first time was, was I think Kerbal one point three. 
came out with uh, the curb net and had the satellites and the relay, he actually did the TDRS without any mods manually, and it was a long stream. So, yeah. Um, so all we have to do now is get this to match. That needs to be 48 seconds. Fall maple tree. Thank you so much for that follow. Oh, too much, way too much. What am I doing? There we go. All right. So now if we take a gander here, there's my little communication triangle. That's what we're looking for. All right, so we're gonna go to this. Don't need it anymore. We can set this up on a retrograde orbit. That's going to crash. All right, let's go back to Space Center. And we're going to design us a science lander. Or no, we're just, let's design a lander and use that as a point to, for the team to land. Yeah, ooh, we got a lot of, a lot of science here too. Sweet. Um, so speaking of landing, uh, let's get some better landing legs. Um, the other science is over here. So how do we unlock that? We have a thousand, so 300 and then 550. That'd be nice. More science? Why not? All right, let's unlock that. And we're going to send Kerbals to the Mun. Do we really need... I don't think we need the mainsail yet. We're not doing heavy lifting. So let's grab that. And... Let's take our science orbiter and modify it to make a lander. So... We'll take the Minmus Orbiter. All right. Um, all right. A little tall, and we do have some new science. Ooh, yeah, a lot of science. Um, well, let's grab this, put that there, grab that, put that there, and that's all rover arms. Already have that. Cool, all right. All right. have an idea 
we're gonna need panels we're gonna need the food so if we take so this is the tx 900 fuel tank so if we take the one that's half as big which is the, that one let's try something here So it's what I'm trying to do is come up with a, a design that's not so top heavy. Yeah, let's put the landing legs on. Still need a, an engine to land. So how do we get enough fuel to land and take off? So the 900 it's got twice as much fuel as this. So we need to get... Four oh five. How do we do that? Well, we cheat. Not really, but kind of. So first of all, let's get an engine plate. And for an engine, I, I think we're going to have to use a swivel. Because we're going to need some oomph. Now again, for the MUN... Oops. Not terribly bad, but uh, we want to make sure we can land and take off. Uh, I do want to have the fuel equivalency of this. So we're coming up. We have to add another. That 200 shy, so we need another 200 delta V. All right, Let's see how we can do this. So if we add these guys, not a little bit too big. Those would work. So that's 45, 90. That's 180. That would get us the delta V. What's the difference between that and this? 29, that's a lot. So that gets us the fuel we need. Basically, we would just be kind of shimmying that in like so. You wouldn't see it, but I, I need to be able to manipulate. All right, so we need to put snacks back on okay and solar panels now this time we're going to use different solar we're going to use these so the only thing missing is the rcs here and i think all right so let's get rid of that Take these down here for right now. Then we need the very, I don't need this for docking. I just need to help for control. So this, we don't need any. This. All right. So if we are in orbit around Kerbin, so I don't think I want to use this craft to get us to the Mun that would use over half the fuel. So this is this is our lander that's going to land and take off and get back to curb. That's the plan. So we need a um, need a kicker stage. 
Let's see. Nope, that would not do. All right. <clears throat> um. Let's grab a coupler. Too big. All right, then we need a fuel tank. Digital, thank you for the 42 months, man. I appreciate that very much. That is not enough umph. That is enough umph, but not enough fuel. All right, so we're going to do some saddlebags here. Digital, how the heck are you doing? Monster, thanks for the hype. Uh, fuel tanks, fuel tanks. Thank you. All right, let's put some saddlebags. Still not enough. Can you tone down the technical talk way above my head? What did I say that was above your head, sir? Saddlebags? That's what they put on a saddle. Saddle bag. So 1,094 Delta V. No, don't want to do that. So let's just add a little bit more fuel. Not enough oomph. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Delta V. You're mocking me, aren't you? Um. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to use that. That's going to be our transition stage from turbine orbit to the mud. I forgot how many. Nine miles per hour is AV. What? 1400 Delta V takes nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we're not gonna have much fuel left, but that's okay. Uh, we do need to, um, oomphs. Oh, I got you. Yes, oomphs. <laughs> yeah, we need oomphs. There we go. Ah. No. Yes. Dude. Okay. Um, what we need to do is that, um, All right, now the lifter. If I remember correctly, one oomph is approximately on 138.49 Delta V. I think that's correct. Whoa, that's ugly. All right, can we... All right, what's got, what's got, what's doing the shroud here? I'm confused. Why? That is weird. Evidently, the bobcat isn't very shroud friendly. I didn't know that. All right. All righty. Um, all 
this is not enough fuel to get to orbit. So... What the heck is going on here? Better. Yep. Not enough fuel. So. Well, we can crank that up and maybe another tank. Time for more boosters. Well, let's see here. 144 thrust to weight ratio inside the atmosphere, which we won't be all the time. We're coming up shy. Now that's cutting it close. So I think, yes, we're gonna do a small amount of boosters. And this is not the Minmus Science Orbiter. This is the Mun Mun Science Lander. Ooh, all gangly rocket. All right. Um, Not every problem. Well, unless you want to put boosters on rovers, then it's just like instant Kerbal death. <sighs> He's probably true. Um, You know, go big or go home, right? For all your tactical needs. Um, so let's set this to be there. This also. stretch Let's um, drag all that down here. Now to help with any kind of stability issues that we're gonna have, we're gonna do struts.
All right, and help with the Delta V. All right, we have plenty of gas in the tank, all right? 133, get rid of our boosters. We still have a high thrust to weight ratio. All right, we need some brave volunteers. Who's gonna be the pilot? DJ? Ren? Saturn? Pick DJ. Then for the scientist, um, we got race. All right. First Kerbal's gonna land on the Mun. They have all the new science too. They have um, seismic, the Grav Max, all to land on the Mun. All right. Let's see if we can do this. Oh wait. Almost killed the Kerbals. <laughs> Almost. There we go. Oh, that that's not where you want to put those. All right, here we go. The long drive golf. That, that's not you in a golf cart making a long drive. That's just a long whack, right? Ooh. Wow. Got science already. All right. No. And good, good. So 85 is our orbit. We want to do that, do that, do that. Everything looks good here. All right, Kerbals. Onward. No. There is a car made by Volkswagen called the Golf Mark I, and I love them, and the long drive is a video game with the car in it. I was completely way off base then. Well then, there you go. You have educated me today. Probably forget that tomorrow. That's okay though. All right, for those tuning in, I know nothing about real rocketry. What I know, I have learned from Kerbal. So many of the, hey, that's my rally car, a VW Mark One. There you go, something in common. So if you're here to learn about Kerbal, I might be uh, able to help. If you're here to learn about rockets, don't have a clue. A lot of drag. Red is bad. All right, saying goodbye to the boosters. There you go. Bye guys. All right. So if your car is parked over here, I'm sorry, but a booster might hit it. <laughs> Take out range dangle. How you doing notable? Red is bad. I'm going to tell him you said that. Not red munchkin gaming, the red, Never mind. I watched Dr. Stone, so I know how to make rockets in the stone ages. There you go. Where am I going? We're gonna land our first Kerbals on the uh, surface of the Mun. So the Mun. First time in this playthrough. 
Mine it is. Yes. All right, we're going to deploy this fairing here real soon. We're definitely overkill on the Delta V, but that's what we want. Our challenges are that we do have a life support mod, so we have snacks. We have to make sure you got enough food. Well, the, we did have a couple of mods that would give you part failures. <clears throat> and uh, it was kind of a, it was a really, really cool concept that the more you use the parts, they became higher in generation, which means they became better. So you learned from the, the previous generation. If you recovered the part, it would still be a first generation, but because you recovered it, it had a higher safety rating. So you could code two different ways don't go with that. Don't, don't, don't do your conspiracy stuff. No, no. Read the rules. Turn that off. Um, okay, fine. Um, but it was causing us lag after it started collecting so many parts and keeping track of it. We're getting lag in the editor. I told the mod author, he said he was going to try to fix it, but... I had no due date, so I took out the part failure mod, added in life support. So, not as cool as a challenge, but still, you gotta make sure you get pack a, a healthy lunch, you know? I'm intrigued how much of the mods they implement in KSP2. We'll have to wait for the mod authors. I mean, I think, to be honest with you, I don't think it's a priority yet, but you do know that they do. If you watch the last, uh, the Kerbal release announced trailer, you'll find out that they actually hired uh, a mod author, uh, the guy responsible for Interstellar, uh, Nirta is what he goes by. So, um, you know that they're going to have an actual API for modding, so they're, they're not going to let us down. All right, so let's get rid of, so this has got, wow, that's actually got enough Delta V to get us to the moon. Ooh, cool. Ooh, cool. All right. Whoa. That's a lot of lines. There we go. Now we're only going to have enough fuel in this stage to get us there. So what I'm going to do is something going to look totally dopey. I'm going to try to plot us a, well, this right here will impact the mud, but I want us to impact even more like that. Uh, well, you see, the thing is I am right now on a is a chromebook not a gaming one ah, i got you oh um probably should deploy panels Lining up for our burn.
There you go. Late on our burn. Very late. I know my CP is coming up on seven years old. Told Alex though, I go, oh. I go, no, no computer upgrades um, until after we move into the house. So we still have 284 Delta V. That didn't quite work out, did it? Um, <clears throat> there, that's better. All right, so let's point prograde. Then we're going to Now we're going to switch back because we still have control over this and I want to make sure. So this stage is in fact going to impact on the Mun. That means we don't have to worry about it. Yay. All right. Now we have to get out here a ways and do a course correction. We don't, we don't die. So we're going to depart. We're going to leave that on a collision course with the MUN. And we're going to make a course correction so we don't collide with the MUN. And we'll get our orbit. And we'll uh, find a landing site. Start collecting some science. Yeah. All right. So that should get it us right... Around 50 kilometers, maybe. Close enough. All right. It's so empty out here. Hey, there's the mun. All right. Oh, look at that. We're getting some science. Cha-ching. By the way, I do have a series of mods that actually, as long as I have a scientist on board, it will do science collection. And the ones that require a reset, the scientist, why is that hanging out there like that? Dude. Yeah, that's weird. Oh, this is why. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so it's called the auto science sampler and in here it has recent the experiments, but only if you have a scientist, that's race. Um, and right now it's storing all of our experiments in the command pod. Mainly it works only for the stock ones. All right, let's get our orbit here. It's a very nice mod. 
Now remember, this is our transitional stage. This is the stage we're supposed to use to get from Kerbin orbit to the Mun, but we used our lifter to do that. So we got plenty of gas in the tank, so to speak. Technically, it's called Delta V. It's how you change your position in space, but I just say gas in the tank. It makes more sense to me. We're gonna land on the Mun. We're gonna get some big science. Hopefully. Well, yeah, I would have to like put a docking port on it. And then when I suck it dry, then it's just floating up there. I would just rather not have any debris. How much debris do I have actually? I have eight pieces of debris. That's not bad. All right, so we have got 1200 Delta V to line up our landing. So, um, let's land where the sun is. So we have a nice, Could land like right here in this crater maybe right here line that up that is my ever new career in Kerbal build a Kerbin station for fuel send recon sat to the mun build space station around the mun restart there you go <laughs> we are um... all right let's get to here need to put the brakes on we're gonna we're gonna land right about there well you know i had a lot of fun with a mod that rover dude made called mks and i did i i went through the painstaking process of landing miners on the planet where the resources were so that the, they would dig up the resources. It would go into the planet's inventory. And then I had a base set up to take those resources, refabricate those raw resources into secondary resources, take those and make other things. And I had a self-sustaining uh, uh, base. The only thing I had to do is I had to worry about the morale or something of the Kerbals. If they were away from home for too long, they would get a low morale. So I'd have to do crew rotations. Using miners is child labor. Yes. <sighs> All right, so um, do that. 49er miners, you know? So the objective is to park between below that thing. But it was a lot of fun. And then I tried to replicate the same thing on Duna, which was a bigger challenge because of obviously, you know, different atmosphere and gravity and yada, yada, yada. The fun was actually um, landing each module of the station and then using um, 
using a, a mech jab to actually maneuver the craft so we could line them up, land them, and then you, he had um, he had really cool um, umbilicals. I uh, can't remember what they're called. Uh, tunnels, something. They're very flexible. I liked them. All right. We're getting close, aren't we? Yep. So let's do this. Put on the brakes even more. That's going to uh, shy. I don't know if it's even going to be flat here, but that's going to cost us 331 Delta V and we've got 975. Anyways, he had these flexible tubes that you would put on the modules and you would uh, use a Kerbal to connect them. And uh, it was basically how you got back and forth. Kind of like in the Martian, you know how they had that section where they would leave the the hab and it was a, like a, a, it was a, um, an air dot, an airlock with uh, doors and stuff. It was something like that. It was kind of cool. All right, so this is, this is about where we want to land right there. All right, so we can stop that, do that, do this, do that. And right now go over here. All right, so we are about seven kilometers. So we still have 559 Delta V in our transfer stage here, and we're gonna use almost all of it to slow us down. So when we switch over to the lander, we've got max fuel. All right, so right now it's actually pretty darn flat where we're at. So I'm going to try to put on the brakes. So right now we have very little horizontal drift. So what I'm looking at here is a very minimal slope, but we still are drifting like one over one and a half meters. So if I turn on RCS, I know we're, we're descending here pretty fast. All right, turn off RCS. Say goodbye to that. Kind of a dorky looking lander, isn't it? Oh, we got a steeper now for some reason. We have 1600 LTV. Looks like we have a little bit of a slope deal with after all uh, uh what if we i don't have time to play around oops all right what if we move away from the crater's mouth here all right that's better Point four, point eight, one point six. I like that. All right, I can deal with that a lot more. There's a loud explosion.
Um, no. There's a there's a mod called Kerbal Inventory, Kerbal Attachment, and it comes with C4, so you can actually attach C4 to stuff and blow it up. Yeah, so it looks like not everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Gotta pay attention. Oh, touchdown. Look at all the signs for something over there. We're going to go check it out. Wow, we landed in a very uninteresting spot. There's nothing around us. Huh. Well, that, that's unfortunate hoping to find something to investigate but absolutely nothing way to go Andy all right well let's make sure that we don't lead our batteries so we'll, we'll extend one panel let's get our scientist out All right, have him plant a flag. All right. First, Kerbals, one, landing, landing, landing. All right, let's see what, let's see what we got over here. Looks like the engine, maybe? It is. Wow. Get a selfie here. All right. Oh, look at that. He saluted. Nice timing. All right. That thing. Um, yeah, there's no rocks. There's no little craters. Nothing. Nothing to check out. Yeah. Got a rocket engine to push them on. There's nothing. Well, you know, an uneventful, non-disastrous is better than an eventful, disastrous. Hey, editor, good morning to you. How the heck are you doing today? Hmm. All right, well. Go back home. I can't believe there's nothing to check out. Dang it. Let's just see if there's uh, anything over here. Oh, 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 look at there. Sorry, we have a rock. I believe we can investigate that rock. Keep an eye on his EVA fuel. Live and above ground. There you go. <laughs> okay, I saw something that we can investigate. I think it's right there. Should be a mun rock.
Oh, it is. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Um, pick up Moonstone. Okay. There he goes. Whacking away on it with his little rock or his little hammer. Ow. That's, that's some nice science right there. He put that whole thing in his pocket. Oh, he's not getting off the surface with that. All right. We've got a Munrock. A Munrock face. I remember once before I really learned how to control EVA, I hit my lander so hard, I knocked it over. Ouch. All right. So we've got 19 science experiments and a flag. All right, let's, uh, Turn that off. We've got 1300 L to V. Let's get out of here. It is. I hope so. Oh, wait. Let's grab an orbit. 333 Delta V. Each time you see some text up here, that's us grabbing some science. If it's orange, that means it's a duplicate that's been dropped. the computer to plot us a course and let's go take a look at that course course of course hmm Your poor other Kerbal goes all the way to the moon surface and didn't get out. Well, he's got to monitor all the systems. He's got to make sure, you know, everything, the engine doesn't take off without him or some, you know, stuff. The price you pay to be a pilot. So the scientist gets to get out and gets to do all the fancy stuff. But now going home, the pilot gets to do all the clicking and stuff. Sure. I get it. All right, we're going to burn 270 Delta V of the 630 we have to get back home.
everyone's got their job. That's why I really like that part failure mod. The engineer in vanilla Kerbal, the only thing you can really do is repair tires. No, no, I take that back. You can, if an engineer deploys solar panels, depending upon the level of the engineer, you get more power from the solar panel. If your scientist deploys the science experiments, I believe you get more science. Not much, but more, I think. But otherwise, the engineer just repacks chutes and repairs broken wheels. Part failure mod, the engineer, depending upon the level, has a higher success rate of repairing like a broken solar panel or something. It's pretty cool. All right. That should be nice. All right. Turn that on and let's go to there. All right, so now we are on our way back. Wow, look at all the orbits. On our way back. Kerbal. Kerbin. Planet. Earth like, but not really. Your poor other, uh, I thought Michael Collins had it bad. No, he was up there reading books and stuff, you know? <clears throat> you know, if I unlock enough parts, I wouldn't mind doing like my version of the Saturn V along with the Lem. I've done that before, it was a lot of fun. Quite the challenge. All right, so we have I think. Yeah, let's get a look. Oh, let's do this. Let's bring in the solar panels just so they don't cause any problems. Oh, we're still grabbing signs too. This is incredible. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, even more as we speak or as I speak, whatever, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, all right, let's uh, say goodbye to that stage by stage. All right, shoots are deployed and ready. We're gonna let physics do its work here. Oh, snap crackle. Oh. All right. You know, sometimes I should probably really check to see. Uh, the ISS has a big net they can deploy to scoop up science. Yes, I've seen that. Even the uh, Skylab had that net too, so it would grab space debris or something like that. Yeah. Did anyone ever watch the documentary? Uh, I'm, I'm going to forget. Commander Kelly. Was that the name? The, the guy that spent a year in space has got a twin brother also that worked at NASA. I watched this documentary and I never knew this, right? That when they detected a sizable debris, piece of debris coming to the ISS, they would all have to get into the Soyuz, lock it up just in case something happened so they could get it, get the heck out of Dodge. Wow. I mean, wow. Hey, we're over the desert.
I had no idea it was that risky of the amount of clutter they had floating up there. I mean, I, I, there's that website you can go to and you can see all the foreign objects and satellites and stuff up there, but that's better. It appears we may land in the water. Oh, we got no ablator left. I know that's exactly. I think you're right there, uh, big happy Clint. We're all wobbly. <clears throat> Stupid moon rock. I would have to say that my angle was not spot on, so that's why there is no ablator, yes. Yeah, for those who don't know, if you put a heat shield on and you crank the ablator all the way and you, you go with the default, the amount of ablator actually affects the weight. So, you know, like I think I had to set at 150. So sometimes you don't need a full ablator. Oh. They've been chomping away at the snacks there. So weird. Can't really see. Oh, there. Oh, where? There it is. Look at. Even here, you can see the sun coming in through the windows on, on their on their noggins. There we go. We have shoot deployment. You got an EVA report. You got a parachute too. I was duplicate.
Oh, we survived. And we feeble wobbles. All right, let's recover these guys. See how much science they got. Still waiting. Science jackpot. I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice chunk of science on that. Look at that. Look at all those. Splashdown ribbon. How come race didn't get a splashdown ribbon? That's interesting. Does race already have? A splashdown ribbon? I don't want to be blamed for showing favoritism or anything, you know? Oh. Um. Oh, we already had it. That's why. All right. Just making sure. That's a good chunk of science right there. All right, guys. That's it for today. Um. I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow. I have to send a text over to the contractor for the house to see if he's going to be by tomorrow. He has some adjustments to do on the doors he installed. And uh, we found a possible problem he's going to help us out with on a, some uh, molding. Not mold, but, you know, base molding on a floor. So anyways, guys, appreciate y'all hanging out. Let's roll some credits here. Boom, ba -doo, boom, 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 boom. Guys, thanks for all the new follows, man. I really do appreciate that. Digital and Jokey, thank you so much for the resubs. Notable, we'll see you later. Race, you have a fantastic one. And uh, I'll see you guys later.